Log in, log out and registering a user is a crucial part of most of the applications. And we will look here at an example where we can sign up a user and therefore he can set an avatar, he can set a name, birthday and so on. And after it he can also log out again. And after this he can log in again and can choose this user account and then he can modify his information which is then stored locally on the device. So even if you close your application, all the user data is persisted. If you are new here, subscribe to my channel and make sure to watch this video till the end. In the last video, we already implemented this application here where you can store some information of the user and this will then be stored with shared preferences on your local device. In this video, we want to go further and also store images on our phone and also other information and this is more complex and therefore we make use of JSON and we simply store our users as JSON with shared preferences. I will also put the link of the last video in the description of this video. Now let's get started by our simple preferences and here we basically use last time shared preferences to store our username which is here on the right side and we also store here our birthday and we also store here some list of strings. And this can be really cool if you have some kind of information to store, then you can store like everything independently. However, if your screen gets more information like this user image and also other information, then it makes more sense to store JSON within your shared preferences. To store our users later, we will create first of all a user object and therefore we want to put here only a name inside of this user object next to an ID. Therefore I create first of all an ID and also a name and this is basically the name which we later have here within our text field. And then we also create a copy method with which you can later modify your user object. And here we basically put all the fields inside and then you simply create every time a new user object. And for each field you also put here these statements inside with which you later copy an individual part of your user and I will go more into detail about this method later. Now the most important thing is to create the from JSON and to JSON because we want to persist later our whole user data and right now we want to start here with the name, however later we also want to store images and so on. Therefore I create here first of all a method from JSON and here we basically get some JSON which we then convert again to a user object and this is pretty simple, we simply put here for each field this statement inside and this is basically getting out of our JSON the key ID for example and then we basically get here this ID string which we have stored in before. And to store your JSON you create here the toJSON method and here inside you put all the other fields inside which you have in your class. So we have only two in this case and with this one we basically create here out of our user object a JSON format and with this one we basically create from the JSON format a user object. And now we have done already a major step forward and we can go here to our user page which is this page here on the right side. And here we basically stored all of these fields independently inside, however this time we want to put here instead a whole user object inside which we convert then later to JSON. And therefore we exchange here this name by our model object. And in the last video we learned that you can load the information here in your init state method from your shared preferences. And here we basically loaded all the information, for example this username, after the app was closed and if the app was restarted again. However this time we want to do it differently, so we don't want to store each individual field, we want to store only one field, so it is faster and more simple. And now to store our user information, we create here a new file and this time we don't call it user simple preferences, we call it instead user preferences. And here inside we also put the logic inside for initializing our shared preferences. And this is exactly what we also learned in the last video. And for initializing our shared preferences, you also need to go to your main file and here you need to put then this statement inside. So last time we initialized our simple preferences. However, this time we want to initialize here our user preferences. This is the new class which we have created right now. And to make also use of the shared preferences, make sure that you go to your pubspec.jml file and then you need to put here this shared preferences under your dependencies inside. And now we want to implement here our user preferences and last time we basically implemented every time a setter and a getter for storing our username 
and also for retrieving our username again from the local storage. And with the new class, this is more simple. So we only need to create here one method for basically getting our user. And then we basically get here all the fields of this user directly because we simply store JSON and we also retrieve again our JSON format. And therefore we simply want to load the JSON which we get from our local storage. And here basically we get from the preferences a string. So we store our JSON as a string. And therefore you need to have a key to access your user and our key is here our ID user. And with this statement we basically got here our JSON as a string back. And we also want to call here our method user from JSON with which we can basically transform our JSON to a user object. And here inside you put then your JSON inside to make out of your JSON a user class again. And you also need to wrap here the JSON decode method around because this is a string and we need here a map of string dynamic. And with this JSON decode method you basically transform a string to this map string dynamic. And to understand here this method more clearly you also need to have the counterpart and here we basically set our user. So basically we get in the beginning here our user which has then a name which we have put here inside and also an ID. And now we want to convert this user to our local storage and therefore we need to convert it to JSON. And how we can do this is by calling here our user and then the to JSON method. And this creates then out of our user object this map string dynamic which we want to store. And like before we decoded here our string to a map string dynamic and we also need to do here the same thing. So basically we need to put here this JSON encode inside and this will make out of our map string dynamic a string object. And now we get here our JSON string back which we can easily store within our preferences. And first of all we need to get here the key of our user. So I select here user.id which is our key. And after this you call preferences set string and here inside you need to put a key value pair. So first of all I put here the key we want to put this user under the key id user inside. And then we put our value our json string here inside. And with these three lines you can basically store any json format any object which you have in your application to a json format. And here you can later retrieve this information again. And now we simply go back to our user page and we only need to retrieve now our user and to store our user information. And therefore I go again to the init state method and here inside I simply first of all retrieve the user information which we have on our local storage. And therefore I simply call here this get user and then you need to put here your key inside which is our id user. And this is what I get here from the outside world and later I will go more into detail about this. However first of all we get here some user information and this is then stored here within our user object. And secondly we need to go here to our save button and every time if you put here some information inside and then we click on the save button then we want to persist our user data. Last time we used here three statements for storing each individual data. However this time we have here a lot more information and we don't want to call for everyone here a new method. And therefore we simply call here only one method our set user. So instead of these three methods I simply put here one method inside which directly stores all of our user information. And lastly we also need to fix here our error within our build name method which is basically here this text field on the right side. And here we basically used last time this field name which we don't have anymore because we replaced it by this user object. And therefore I simply call here user.name and here we basically access then this field of our user object. And secondly we want to use here our copy method with which we can modify our user object. And here everything is final so you cannot change the fields here manually. You need to call here this copy method. Therefore let's go back to our user page. And here we store our username which we get here inside of our user object. Therefore you simply call here this user copy method and put here your name field inside. And this is basically changing only the name field out of our user object. So basically here inside of this user object you have two fields. However if we only put here one field like name inside then only the name object will be changed and the ID will keep the same data like it had before. And copying here our user object will simply create a new user object which we also need to put inside of our user object so that we put the new copy 
within this user object here at the top inside. And now we can try this example out. So I simply put your name inside and click on save. Now we can hot restart our application. And the first thing which you see is that we get here an error. And this error occurs because we try to get here a user which we don't have initially in our system. So what we need to put here also inside is that if our user is not existing yet, then we simply want to create here a new user object. And we also put here an ID inside which we generate. And therefore I make use of this UUID package and which I also put here inside of this pubspec jaml file. And with this one, you can basically generate IDs. And now after I have hot restarted, he is not trying to get here the user information because first of all, we need to create here our new user with some ID. And then we also need to fill here some information inside and then also store it. Now let's try our example out. So I simply extract here this ID and put it here at the top inside and I also print it so that we can see which new ID our user here gets by default. And now if I hot restart, you see here first of all the ID which will be put inside of this user object. And now we can try it out. So I put here also a name inside which will be then stored on our local storage through the user object. And now we simply take here this ID and put it here inside at the top. And here we basically have then an ID. And if we have here an ID inside, then next time he will simply load the user from our local storage. And now after you hot restart your application or after you closed your application and started your application again, then you see here your username inside. And now with this whole complete setup, we have already accomplished a lot. So we can now store instead of only our username, we can also store images within our user object, birthday and so on. And this can be easily persisted to our local storage. Therefore, let's go inside of our user model. And inside of this user model, we also want to store these other fields here, the birthday, the image and also the pets. So basically we have here at the top an image, then we have this birthday and here we have a list of strings, our pets. After this, we select here some default values in our constructor. In your copy method, you need to include then these new three variables. Therefore, I simply put it here inside and then you need to follow here the same syntax. So make sure that you also put here your other fields inside. And now comes the most important part to actually implement also the from JSON and to JSON. And with this one, we can basically then transfer our daytime object to a JSON format and also our list string to a JSON format. Therefore, let's get started with the to JSON method. And here we want to store our date of birth. And this is of a type of daytime. And within JSON, you cannot store directly a daytime object. Therefore, you need to convert it to a string. And here I use this to ISO string method. And after this, we want to store here our image path. And this is basically here a string object. So there is no complication about storing it directly here inside. And lastly, we also want to put here our pets inside. And there is also no problem. So you can easily put a list of string object inside. Now we also want to implement here our from JSON method for these three fields. And therefore I simply go here to this user simple preferences, which we have implemented in the last video. And here you can see what we have used last time to transfer here our birthday again to a daytime object. And this is what we basically use now. Therefore, let's go back to our user class. And here we want to get first of all our date of birth. So exactly the same key which we have stored in before. And this is then a string because we have stored here a string inside. And now we want to make out of the string again here this daytime object. And therefore I simply make use of this daytime try pass which we also learned in the last tutorial. The next field is this image path. And this is pretty simple because the image path is of a type of string and therefore we can simply put it here inside without converting it. And the last thing what we need to implement is this list string. And this is again a bit more complicated. And here you basically get here first of all the JSON which you have first of all stored. And after this, you need to convert it to a list of string and therefore you simply wrap it here inside of this list from and then you put here the string inside. And with this statement, we basically get here our pets again to a format of list string. And now with this new user object, we can easily implement also our image here and this birthday and also our pets. Therefore, let's go back to our user page. And this time we don't need to change here anything in our init state because we already get here the user and we simply added here some fields to the user. So this should be fine. 
And also here for our save button, we also don't need to change anything because we already put here this user object inside and this will then convert our user object to this JSON format. And therefore it simply calls here this to JSON method, which we have implemented before. The only thing what we need to do is we need to put here this birthday, our pets, and also later our image inside of this user object, which then will be persisted. Therefore, let's start by simply removing here these fields, what we had in the last tutorial, where we stored everything independently. And this time we want to store everything directly within our user object. And then we simply exchange here our data for our birthday field. So this time we cannot access here the birthday field directly. So we need to go over the user and here inside we have this date of birth field. And like before, we also need to call here our copy method to change the birthday. So I simply change here this implementation and then I put here this date of birth inside and I also need to name it here correctly. And the same thing is also for our pets. We simply use here instead of this pets field directly the user pets. And this is then basically this list of string which we have stored within our user object. And secondly, we also need to change here this implementation. So I simply paste it here inside. And here inside we simply remove or simply add this new pet if we have clicked on one of these pets. And after this, we simply put here our pets inside of our user object. Let's also try this implementation out. So I go again to the top and I remove first of all this ID user. And now we can basically select here date and then also start here. We can also select some pets and click on save. And then we basically persist here our user object with all these different fields here inside. And secondly, we need to copy here our ID again and go to the top. And then we simply put here our user ID inside to which we have stored our user information before. And now after I've hot restarted or closed my app again and restarted it, you see we have here all this information inside. And now we want to continue and also integrate here these two switches and also our image where we can pick an image from our library. And basically we want to put both of these data within a new object, within our user object. And therefore we learn here a new variant of how to store some data. And by the way, if you want to get here this whole source code of this application, you can get it with the first link in the description. And with the second link, you can get access to my Flutter courses where I teach you how you can become a more efficient and better developer. To implement here these both switches, we need two Boolean fields. And this is what I want to store within this new object settings. And this settings object we want to put later within our user object. Here inside of this settings class, we create then our two Boolean flags for our switch. And we also create a constructor and a copy method like we learned it before. And lastly, we also need to implement here this from JSON method and also the to JSON method. And here inside, you can basically put the values normally inside because you don't need to convert it because we have here this primitive Boolean flag. And now we go simply to our user object. And here inside of this user object, we simply want to put our settings object inside. And we also create here in our constructor a new settings object, which has then our default values allowed newsletter to true and also the notifications at true. And after this, you also need to put here your settings object in your copy method so that you can later modify it. And there you simply put this statement also inside. And now I simply want to show you how you can transfer this object to a JSON format. And first of all, we want to implement the from JSON method. And therefore you simply create here this new JSON out of your key settings. And here you need to convert this JSON format to a settings object. And therefore you simply wrap it here inside of the settings from JSON, which we have implemented before. And this will then convert this JSON format again to our settings object. And secondly, we also need to implement here this to JSON method. And therefore you simply create here the settings. However, you cannot put the settings directly inside because this is an object and we need to convert it to JSON. And therefore you simply can call here this to JSON method, which we have also implemented before. And this will make out of our settings object this JSON format. And now we can go back to our user page and implement the switches. And I basically put already the switches inside like you can see here. And what you need to make sure is that you simply override here your settings object and put here then the new Boolean flag inside and the settings object you need to copy then within your user object so that you simply put here the new settings object to your user object. And the same works also for the other switch. 
So in total, you only need to make sure that you put the data inside of this user object so that you update the settings field and then everything works out of the box because we have here this to JSON and from JSON methods implemented. So let's also try it out. So I simply deselect here all of these buttons and then click on save. And here in our user page, I also update this ID so that we have here the new ID, which we want to load from our storage. And now after I've restarted the application, you see we have here these new values inside, which we have stored before. And now we want to continue to also implement here this image and also store it within our local storage. And after this, we want to implement here this login page where we basically get all the users which we have stored before and we basically can select then a user and then we can change this information again. So let's get started by putting here our image inside. So I simply replace this title widget by our build image method, which we want to implement. So let's implement our build image method. And here we basically create a build avatar method and around it we have gesture detector. So later, if we click here on this image, then we want to change our image. Now let's create first of all this build avatar method, which basically displays our image. And therefore I create here this build avatar method. And here we look up for this image path. So if it is currently not empty, then we want to show the image later. And otherwise, if our image doesn't exist yet, then we simply want to add here this plus icon, which indicates that the user can add an image. And we also put here a circle avatar around to make everything around it. After this, we implement here the successful case. In case that we have here already some image inside, then we want to display this image in our circle avatar. And therefore, I simply create here a circle avatar. And this makes our image rounded. And here inside, I basically put this image file inside. And here we load then this user image path. And we also give it some width, height, and also this box fit. And if you don't have the knowledge about how to create this circle avatar images, I will link in the description box a video about images. And now you see already that we have here this plus displayed. And now if we click on this one, then we want to put an image within this image path in our user object. Therefore, let's go back to our user page. And here we go to this gesture detector. So if we click on this image, then we want to store our image locally and also put this image path to our user object. Therefore, if we click here on this icon, then we want to get started by first of all, picking an image from the library. And here I select basically that we select from the gallery of our phone. And if you want to make use of this image picker, you need to go to your pubspec jumble file. And here inside, you need to set this image picker under your dependencies inside. And later we will also make use of this pass provider to store our image. And therefore you can already put it inside under your dependencies. And the statement basically gives us then an image from the library and we simply check if it is null. Otherwise, if it is not null, we can store it. And we want to put this image which we picked to our application storage. So each app has an independent storage where we want to store our image because we want to make sure that our image is always there. And therefore I simply create here an ID for our image which we later use in our pass. And this consists then of our ID user and also another generated ID. And then we create here our image path. So it consists here of this directory where we want to store our image because right now it is stored within the library. However, we want to store it in our application document directory. And here I use basically this ID for identifying our image and to make sure this image is unique. And then after this, we can basically copy this image from this path inside of this path. And how you can do this is by simply calling here, first of all, this image path from the top, which we have picked. And then you can call here a method copy. And then you copy basically this image, which we have picked to this new location. And after this, you simply put here the destination inside. So we put here this image file path inside, which we have determined before. And now we basically have copied this image to a new location. And we also need to store it within our user object. Therefore, I simply override here this image path and put here this new image path inside. And now we basically can also store an image. So I can click here on this plus and then we can basically select it from our library and we also can save it. And now this image path, which we have here for this image is then stored within our user object and also persisted if we click here on the save button. 
And after you have closed your application and restarted it again, you also see again here this image inside because we have persisted it in our local storage. We have so far looked at the registration process. However, now we also want to look at how we can log into the application again after we have closed our app and restarted it again. And therefore we have here also this other area where we basically can log into the users which we have stored on our device. And in this case, you see we have here two users. And if you click on one of these users, you come back to this page and you can also later log out. Right now, we are only storing user objects to a specific key, our ID user. However, right now we don't store this ID user. So if you lose this information, you also can never go back to this user page. And therefore we simply want to store this user information, our ID users also so that we can later show it up on our login page. And therefore we go to the user page to our button, which is the save button here on the right side. And if we click on this button, we are currently persisting here our user. However, now we also want to persist our user IDs. And therefore I first of all check here if it is a new user which we are storing. And this is what we can check easily by this widget ID user. So if we have initially an ID user supplied here at the top, so if this is here filled and if someone set this parameter, then we have an existing user. Otherwise, if this information is not supplied, then we have a new user which we can store to our local storage. And therefore we go again to our save button and here we basically check if it is a new user. And if that's the case, then we want to do some extra step. And here it's called add user. So we want to add the user ID of this user also to our system. And in both cases, we will persist the user. Now let's implement this add users method within our user preferences. Therefore, we create this new method at users and here basically we get the user which we have right now here on this page. And what we want to get from this user is basically only his ID. However, first of all, we load here the IDs. So we get here the string of list. So we want to store a list of IDs and we get it by an ID. So I call here an ID users where we store all the IDs of our users inside and I simply get it here initially. And this can be also null if we don't have any keys set up yet, what we have right now. So we also need to make sure that we have here this empty list in case this is null and if no data is stored yet. And after this, we need to add here our user ID to this ID users list. And therefore I simply make a copy of this ID users list and then add the user ID to the list. And after this, we need to store here our new user IDs to our system again. So again, we call this set string list and then we put here within our key user, which we have loaded again before. And here we put then our new user IDs inside. And all in all, we simply put here this ID of this user, which we have created inside of this list string and persisted on our local storage. And this is pretty great because now we have here this reference key users where we basically store our ID users inside. And this login page here can basically get then all these ID users and then gets the information of each individual user by its ID. And then it can display here this information. And then we create here this new method get users for our login page so that they can get all the users which are stored on our system. And here we basically get then a string of lists. So we want to get here with this key, which we have used before for storing our ID users. We get this time all the user IDs back. And the last thing is to simply convert this user IDs to real users. And therefore we can use here this method where we put our user ID inside and then we get here this user object back. And this is pretty simple. So we go over all of these ID users and then we call here every time this get user method to convert our ID of user back to this user object. And secondly, we also need to make sure that these ID users are not null. So if they are null, then we return here an empty list of users. All right, now we can try it out. We can create a new user, which is then added to our list of ID strings. And this has then a list of all of our user IDs, which we later can then load again with this method. And the most important part is that you don't put here any value for this ID user initially inside. So now I have put here some information inside and I click on save. And then I can go here back to the sign up page, which I have created. And after this, we go here to the login section and you see we have here this user inside. So we basically get here the users 
and then I can click here again and then he is going inside of this user which we also can change again. And I quickly want to show you the implementation of this login page. So basically what we are doing here is to call here our user preferences get users which are getting then us the whole user list and this information we store then within our login page in this field and then you can simply go over this list of users and show them in your UI. And this works also fine with other users. So if I put here a new username inside and click on save and after this I go to the login page, you see that we have here also the other user inside and I can again go here inside and then also change his information. Hello everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. Please make sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to my channel here to get the latest news about Flutter and see you soon, bye.